605 Sioux Falls are keeping our long time drinking some beer today. Comment book books on Richard Boy Johnson the man. Tom Highlander status behind the camera. Ponytail that can only be one. I'm here. Don't cut off that head. All right, we got Mike over here, Sergeant America. No shield either. And of course, you guys, Katie and the fourth element is in the cut. And of course, we are rocking with Wood Green Brewery, like I said. So of course, we got Steve and Jason hanging tight with us today. And uh, first of all, how is it going? Been a long day, but it's going well. Boom. <laughs> and how can it be a long day when you have such an awesome palace oh, yeah. of beer? This is amazing. Because everybody oh, yeah. wants our beer. <laughs> That's awesome. We have to keep making it. We have to keep making it. Yep, we're making it. Out. So we're going to just hit him with a couple of questions, get a quick twirl of the place, and uh, talk some beer and comics today. Boom. So first of all, you guys, tell us about your business. What's great? How did it get started? <laughs> Over drinking beer, ironically enough. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Uh, winter of 2013, uh, my birthday party happened down at Ryan, our third business partner's place, and Steve and I had a couple beers, and we're not in, a, in any place to drive home. So we sat on Ryan's couch for a couple hours, and we started BSing about opening the brewery, and the next thing you know, Steve and I are driving down Main Street, and Phillips Avenue here going, is that space for it? Should we stop and look at that space? And we did, we walked out in this, the first space we looked at, and we looked at each other and went, are we completely serious? Are you kidding? And it kind of snowballed from there. He and I put together a business plan that was pie in the sky stuff. And we realized that we could not pull it off without some help. And we talked to our friend Ryan, and Ryan's like, I'm in. And from there, we built business plans. We talked to other breweries. We did some tours. We talked to business people who kind of mentored us into this position. And then uh, in September of 2015, we opened the doors to Woodbury Brewing Company. And it was kind of a whirlwind of events. So that's the short and dirty of it. And here we are. Dude, no, no way. This is awesome. Um, so, you guys, I, I kind of warned you, this is a comic book show, so I'm going to hit you with the easy one. That you'll both know the answer for me. If Superman walked in, what would you recommend him and why would you recommend him? Does he have to exist on top right now? No. No. I'd have to give him huge. Was there a maple chocolate coffee porter coming out in January of uh, 2017? Or barrel aged, be right around 11%. Maple syrup, chocolate, coffee. That's good. There you go. That's what we call a comic book book exclusive. Just get the skinny. Just because he can handle a big beer. Like well, you know, he's going for the big beer, the Superman. I really think that sometimes Clark Kent is a little underestimated. And if Clark were to walk in, or Superman, as the case may be, they might be the same person. I'd look at him and I'd say, you'd like to play it, I'll understand it, you like to play it on the low key. So I think a good low key beer for you would be our smash. Okay. We got a really cool smash on it's, it's fresh, it's new, it's a completely new recipe that features New Zealand for hot and pops. And it's delicious. Mm -hmm. We got one for Superman, one for Parquet, I think we've got a good size cover. A good evening in Metropolis. Oh boy, oh, oh, look who's here. Skylar's like number yeah. Skylar's number five. <laughs> Alright, so we're just asking him questions about beer. You're like the beerologist on the team, so what do you got? I'm just walking in this place. I have no idea where we're going. Just jump in, let me taste it. Seeing as Clark Kent was a Kansas boy, I mean, wheat makes me think, you know, oh, yeah. you know one of those wonderful wheats you make. The wheat made you guys yeah. always are given a new flavor to your wheats, too, and I think that's what's great. Is as soon as we find something we like, you guys kick out another one that we like, <laughs> and then another treat that we like. Well, I'm glad you liked the next one we kick out, because if yep. we took away the one you liked and you didn't like the next one, yep. uh, oh. sometimes Sarge has made your eyes. Yeah. <laughs> oh. There's, there is a, there's a, there's a free taste here there if you want to get yours. Sure. Oh, I'll go ahead and grab that. <laughs> but it's a difficult situation when you take away something that you've been putting out for a little while, too, I'd assume, yeah. that you know some of your fans have come to like, and then you take that away and try to do a different like, twist on it. Is there something, do you try to go for something similar when you take something off of the roster? Or is it just kind of however you feel? First off, is it me or is he really tall? Like All <laughs> 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 yeah, well, the short guys in the middle. Too. The lights look good. But yeah, right, right. exactly. Um, no, actually, you know, our four main core beers are the Smash, the Wheat, Mount Stout, and our house IPA. And been dialing in the IPA for the last 10 months. I think we got it where we want it, so that'll always be out except for right now we're out of it at the moment uh, smash people know that we're going to change that up because it's single malt single hop and just gives us the ability to educate people on what different malts do what different hops do yeast um, 
the last one that we had was the same grain and hops, different yeast. And people sure. can tell yeah. the big difference. Yeah, I like that. Um, I like the bank uh, hop lab series. So yeah. I, I really like beers and breweries that do that. So you can kind of tell what the specific different ones led to the beer. Yeah. And then we're kind of developing our seasonals. You know, we did the Aaron's Red for St. Patrick's Day, which went over really well. So we'll bring that again probably this fall. Uh, me and Dunkel will come back here in a couple months. You know, so we're just kind of developing what would work for the schedule and what, what should we get out at different times of the year. And I just talked to a guy today who insisted that we bring back the, the breakfast. Yeah. And he loved the breakfast so much that he really wanted that one to come back. Uh, I told him the story yeah. behind it. It's a possibility, but that's yeah. a little more complicated. Yeah. And you guys are also doing seasonals. I, I know we have the rhubarb that's out. You know, thanks to a big rhubarb supply that you get. And uh, it, you know, and I know that you guys keep changing it out as the summer, as the seasons get. I think that's also amazing too. Well, one of those seasonal favorites that will be coming back again shortly is the autumn. Yep. That went over like Gamebusters last fall, and we've got a little bit of a revised recipe. But in addition to that autumn, that kind of Mars and Fest style beer, we're going to come out with a full on Oktoberfest. And I'm currently pipe dreaming, currently pipe dreaming of some dark French Indian lager for November. Right now. now the thing with the lager is it has to sit. Is that correct? So that's why you don't see it. It takes a little longer. Yeah. yeah. There's a, I guess, process that speeds it up a little bit. If you follow the process, you can get it out maybe in three to four weeks. Or well, so we're going to see what happens. Was it like just stuck to be stored? Right? Cold storage. Right. Right. Yeah. So when like other breweries tell you that they cold lagered their beer, yes, of course you can <laughs> lager your beer. Yeah, that's <laughs> what it means. <laughs> so. Look at Skylar, you guys. Everybody, I'm so proud of Skylar. He's like, this is like we normally talk comics and Skyler and comics. <laughs> he is wearing a wonderful cat shirt. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This thing is, uh, it's not quite as good as the one I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> now, of course, all you guys are having beers. I'm having water because I don't drink any more. I don't drink any less. I drink the same oh, amount of people. <laughs> I just wanted to throw that one in. I did. I wrote, waited all day, wrote it down, everything, memorized it. This from the guy when I first met him was drinking nothing but Coors Light, and somebody goes from Coors Light to Mercenary. MGD, MGD, MGD I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> from MGD to, to the Mercenary, yeah. it's just a little joke there, buddy. Yeah, yeah. It's not, it's that's always satisfying, though. When someone comes around, like, I have our 10 down from this round, too, but when someone comes in that's just a, you know, domestic drinker, when you can get them on to some of these different, there's so many things out in the craft beer world. Mm -hmm. And that actually leads me to a question I wanted to ask, but is there something specific you guys are trying to do to stand out? From because there are just craft breweries that they've been opening up in town and they're all over the place basically. So there's something like specific that you guys are trying to do to stand out, or are you just consistently trying to put a good product and let the customers make their decision? I would say that the general rule of thumb with craft beer in the area, even across the, the country, is that you can make crappy local craft beer and people will pay big money and drive a long way to have that local beer. If you make good local craft beer, then you become a destination, you can become that spot. If I, you can walk down my list of beers, whether they're guest taps or our, our brews, and they're all good beers. And you may not like the style, but if you recognize a quality beer, that's what really what we're looking for. We don't necessarily make any holy crap beers, like your face falls off, they're so good. But I don't think you can go down our lineup, any of our beers, and go, oh God, that's awful, and throw it in the ground. Now, there may be some holy crap, here they come beers, sitting over in those barrels, <laughs> <clears throat> September 3rd. <laughs> but that's also one of those growing things. I mean, I think this beer in particular, the snobbery, is one of those beers that is really approaching that, oh my god, this is really freaking good. And then as we continue to grow, I mean, we're 10 months old. If you're, if you're asking for a holy shit beer at 10 months old, and we're getting there to give it to you, I'm pretty happy with that. Yep. It is impressive. I just have to put my vote on too, though, that the Oh My God beer that I've ever had was definitely Team Blood Orange. <laughs> so my vote is to see that. Which will make the return. Since it's voting season, I'm voting for it. In August, <laughs> in August, look for the Blood Orange. What? And I cannot wait till this Wednesday you guys are oh. doing the oh, Habanero Mango. Mango. Yep. Okay. Which, now that is bold. Like not a pepper it's guy. Like uh, one of our customers and now employees, Bob Brown, it's his homebrew recipe, he takes his regular wheat beer, adds some mangoes and habaneros. I'm not a big pepper beer fan, <laughs> but it's just kind of a back end hard hotness. So no. It's actually really good. The mango flavor comes through. I'm looking forward to it. It's probably going to be smaller pours, 
Just so you don't start anybody on fire. <laughs> yeah. Buffalo Wild Wings, look out. Yeah. Right. <laughs> this, is, this is a solid beer. Now, the wings spices these beers can kind of sneak up on you too because yeah. you don't. The spice doesn't really hit your tongue until it's in the back of your throat if you're taking a you know a quick gulp of it. And that I've like, had some pretty bad situations when you cough it up and yeah. it's in the sacks. Like a so, ghost, like a ghost face kill. Yeah, there, this is no <laughs> ghost face kill. No, no. Well, we will totally take up on a tour of the place, and I'm going to actually let Tom get in, so I'm going to switch with him really quick, hang out. All right, guys. Did I, did I miss what was in the barrels? No, we haven't talked about some barrels yet. All right, that, let's start our tour then with the barrels. Oh, should we, do we need to get closer? To the yeah, oh yeah. We got to go check them out. What? what up, guys? I swear <laughs> I was here the whole time. <laughs> For our barrels yet. Uh, some people do like New Belgium, but this is a Wyoming whiskey barrel we got from our friends at Bank Brewing up in Hendricks, Minnesota. Uh, that's a Belgian quad, should ring in about 11.3 percent. And this one is a Buffalo Trace barrel we got from our friend Bo down at Looks Market. And this is a Imperial Stout. This one will ring in somewhere around the 10 percent. These two are going to be available September 3rd in bottles and very small amounts on draft here at Woodgrain on September 3rd, so probably want to get here because very limited supply, as you can see. And, and so what's it, I mean, obviously whiskey bottles are, is that a, nor, are whiskey barrels, is that a normal thing for crack beer? Beers to be aged in a whiskey bottle? Yeah, it kind of started with Goose Island's Bourbon County Stout, which is still one of the best beers I've ever had. Sure. Um, and then just, it kind of blew up from there. So just getting those flavors of the oak, you get some vanilla, you get some uh, you know, just that oaky flavor out sure, there. Sure, that's cool. And then the spirits inside the barrel add a, just a different dimension to the beer as well. How long, so like, I guess, are these data, how long do they sit in here for? Well, they've been in there since October, right? October, November. Yeah. Oh, wow, there. okay. Yep. So they'll be roughly 10 months in the barrel, that which is, is actually so a short cool. amount of time. Oh, really? Some people leave them in for two years. Yeah. Wow. We're not quite there yet. We have just so yeah. limited space to do the barrel program, but we wanted to have fun and do a just do a small amount. Oh, that is so cool! I mean, that, that is awesome. I mean, Buffalo Trace—that's like you know the most common bourbon around. That's and, uh, <laughs> one of the things that we're really excited about is that we have this ability. We've got some really good partners and some awesome customers who really take care of us. This Templeton barrels. Yeah. kind of fell into our lap and it gives us an opportunity to continue through this we can rotate two to three beers through these barrels and, uh, over, before, over their lifetime uh, this one is right now a barley wine it's about 11 percent barley wine that will come out sometime in january ish yeah. and then we've got the huge over there which oh. is us, the superman beer no. superman <laughs> parentheses on the board afterwards there's two gallons of maple syrup in it organic or 100 percent you know pure maple syrup and we've got four pounds of cocoa nibs and then we're going to probably end up doing somewhere around 10 to 20 gallons of espresso or coffee. We don't really know. We'll see what. And then, so that'll come after the barrel process. Yep. Within yep. the barrel, we're going to transfer it to the bright tank to carbonate it. And at that time, we'll taste it and have Cafea come down and just blend it with one of their coffees that they think would go really well. Wow. And so 605 local team ups. Yep. We work with Cafea quite a bit, and they always come through. And that is so cool. Yep, it is. As we start getting in the main area, since I know a little bit of secrets behind the place, <laughs> would you be able to talk with us about where the tables came from? Yeah, uh, this is Steve's wood, so I'll let him talk about oh, it. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. This is yeah, it's, it's a good looking piece of wood. <laughs> kind of stained, though. Mm -hmm. um, no, these all, all the tables we made, so we were working until 2 in the morning, 3 in the morning, delivering all the stuff. Anything in the place, uh, we all three made out of my dad's shop. Oh, that's yes. kind of cool. So this Barn is everything? Yeah. Barn. It was harvested from... Yeah, this was a barn out of Laverne, Minnesota. The family is actually a relatives of our banker across the hall, which is, which is cool. That's Super cool. nice people. Um, you know, there's some carvings in it. The carvings have been there, you know, for 50, 60 years, almost 100 years on some of them. There's actually pencil drawings from 1913. What? This table. Yep. Oh, that so, is awesome. It's just really cool, like 1954. And this gentleman, Steve, is actually living up in the Whoa. cities and hoping he comes down here and we can do it just kind of cool. So then did you guys put a lacquer or something to preserve that yeah, on there? That's so cool. Between five and six coats of polyurethane. Gotcha, yeah. Oh. Yep. <laughs> that is very cool. And then we got some, like this vine over here is one of my favorites. This, is beautiful. Oh, this was all, here. we found this in the barn. We didn't add that. None of the carvings oh. we added. A couple of our customers decided they would carve into them, and 
Yeah. If we ever find out who I'd they like are. I'd like to meet <laughs> these people. That is <laughs> terrible. What character is that what? gives this place, yeah. though? That is so cool. Well, TJ loves somebody. Apparently, TJ started with his name first. <laughs> <laughs> he never got to the broken off half of the beer. Exactly, right? <laughs> he was leaving it open. Any TJ we meet from now on, here on out, is going to give the comic book look rough up. Right? <laughs> yeah. I, knew we, I knew we liked you guys. Yeah. <laughs> so the space itself, the top of the space, is about 1,000 square feet. We can fit about 60 people in here, according to fire code. Uh, and it's really meant to, to permit flow from all the doors, the patio behind you guys, the main doors there, to the, to the bar. I mean, if you look, we've got aisles leading straight to where you should be ordering your beer. And then the whole bar up there is meant to just be able to have that conversation piece. There was an awful lot of measuring and, and gawking and thinking about how we wanted to put that together because we wanted a bar and an atmosphere where you can interact. Some of those bars are so wide that you feel like the bartender is from me to Steve away. At gotcha. the same time, there are some bars where the bartender is a little bit too much in your business. Gotcha. So we wanted to have that happy medium and have it look aesthetically pleasing at the same time. We have a lot of people to thank. Dennis Hartman, yep. Steve's dad, really helped us out a lot. We used to shop and build all the wood stuff. Um, Penny, right? Yep. Helped us out. She set us up a lot of artwork, the rugs, and then the wood shroud around the cooler that was donated for us as well. It's just a lot of blood, sweat, and tears from people who put together and had a lot of faith in us a long time before we were even in a position to open. Um, some of our Mug Club members, our Founders Club members really jumped on board and really supported us. Um, our banker, Jeremy Roman and Rick Anderson, uh, don't find bankers that take big leaps of faith like that very often. And that was really a huge thing for us because it allowed us to move forward. Otherwise, this would never have happened. Um, this is the tap room. And then we don't really divide the tap room, the brewery, simply because we wanted that open feel. We wanted people to be able to experience what it looked like to, to, to brew, to smell, to, to taste, to feel the heat and the humidity, and then to hear the swearing of Steve as he burns his yeah. hands. Yeah. No, no, no. No, that never happens. That never happens. Uh, all the white pipes you see are glycol pipes. Uh, this is where we keep and help temperature control our fermentation process. Glycol is a refrigerant, and fermentation is an exothermic reaction. It means it makes heat. If we don't cool the beer, it'll ferment at unnatural temperatures, and you'll end up with some really weird flavors. So if you guys want to come on over here. It's not very big, but it's laid out pretty well. We got really lucky in our design. You're going to see a lot of different pieces in the brewery that, that look familiar, but maybe look a little bit different than some big craft breweries or big commercial breweries. Uh, FB stands for fermenting vessel, and we've got four primary fermenting vessels. And the TV tanks, the tax termination tanks, are where we finish the beer. And this is where we carbonate, we chill, and make sure everything's ready to go. Uh, in front, you're looking at a, an old wine barrel that we're looking at rehydrating. We've got lots of plans. We've got four red wine barrels. We're looking at putting beers in. Never mind the kitty pool, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Steve's kids will get it back when we're done. We Thanks, Hydra. <laughs> <laughs> and then behind us over here, this is our, actually our, our brew system, our brew house from Psycho Brew. Uh, we love this. We really, really, really love the fact that it was made just north of Grand Rapids, Michigan. Uh, it's a oh, five barrel cool. system. Yeah. Keep yeah. it Midwest, y'all. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And we use the crap on it. It works really, really well. The blanket over the end there isn't to protect the secrets of anything. <laughs> it's insulation, insulating a kettle for, full of work that we're turning into our next Goza. The flavor to be determined. Ooh. And now Goza, I, I always say that that is the candy for adults. It's that <laughs> little Sour Patch Kid <laughs> wonderful <laughs> treat that we get as adults. You yeah. would definitely say that, wouldn't you? Yes. <laughs> yeah. so definitely, I think the Goza style benefits from that. It had, uh, Having fruit added to it. Yeah. So up till now, we started with a cranberry, just thought we'd see what would happen if we yeah. did it, and people loved it. So we did cranberry, then we did raspberry, which will come back, and cranberry will come back. Yeah, we'll just rotate through. There's not one that yeah. we've made that won't come back. <laughs> um, peach, grapefruit. We just we just learned kind of how much fruit to add. Yeah. Uh, this one we have plans for, and look for a dry hop goza coming down the road as well. So anytime goza style is typically salted water. Salted right. and coriander. Yeah. Yep. So it's a Berliner Weiss with salted coriander, maybe a little bit more wheat heavy. This yeah. one is actually about 60% wheat. Uh, so yeah, that's I feel like that's why it really benefits from having you know the fruit flavors to it. Especially it gets, it gets a little bit of a tartness. And like we've all had you know salt on a uh, watermelon or yeah. something like that oh, yeah. at the time. So yeah, think about people that need a salt with tequila shots. Right. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. So you start in here, they, it goes into here, and then you finish in there. And so. then from there it goes to the case. Awesome. Yep. And the case goes to these, and the these goes to these, and then yeah. we'll You know the route. We'll <laughs> <stop there. laughs> uh, we do have plans to start distributing here in the next uh, month or so. Um, it'll be very limited supplies because we're having a really good time keeping up with what we saw in 60 ounce glasses. But our dream is that in the next uh, two or three months that you'll be able to pick up wood grain beers at some of the local, especially downtown establishments. Uh, cool. We've got some really good relationships with some of the liquor stores, um, with some of the restaurants and then other bars downtown. And that's all going to depend on supply. Sure. Part of that is everybody asks, how long does it take to make a beer? Well, it depends on the beer. Some beers take longer than others. We talked about lagers a little bit earlier and how they take longer. If you have to dry off a beer, it takes longer. If it's a simple beer, 10 days to, to two weeks, you can turn a beer around in that quick. And how much And how much are you then, like how much is that taking? Like how many kegs, I guess, would that be? in one batch that's coming out of there in the 10 week cycle. Nine to 10? Oh, yeah. wow. We're lucky to get nine out of it. Yeah. Uh, we're, we could actually push it a little harder if we had to, and we might have to, just to, because if it takes two weeks to make a beer and we sell out of it in a week, that's a problem. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. sure. So we have to figure out how to make more of what we have. We do have room here for two more 10 barrel tanks to be 10 foot tall. Yeah. Um, that would double our capacity. We'd be a little over a thousand barrels a year. That, and that's the max out of this space. Yeah, sure. And all Steve and I would do a beer. Yeah, beer, beer. and yeah. you would be, I mean, be a lot, you have a nice open area right here, you know, for working with Which that. Which is very nice. <laughs> yes. yeah. we, we've talked, we've mapped out how big of a circumference is that going to take up, and you put two in here, and suddenly, when Steve and I are working together, we're yeah. very, very, very <laughs> friends. Hi, how you doing? Um, can I hand you something? There we go. Now, until the distribution gets built up, let's not forget that you do have growlers and half growlers. Oh. They're grumblers. <laughs> Grumbler. Growler is the sound you make after you drink a growler by yourself the next day. Oh my oh, god. Right. <laughs> Grumbler is the sound you make if you drink the grumbler. Oh, I shouldn't have had that whole thing. <laughs> so, yeah, we sell those. They're 29 ounces and 64 ounces, and we put everything in a growler. And we talked really hard about this. We fought back and forth for a while because a lot of places won't put specialty beers in growlers because they're, they're red and they're expensive. And we decided that one of the things we dislike the most about craft breweries is when we wanted to find something and find something really awesome, wanted to take it home and couldn't because it didn't feel We're like, F that, man. Yeah. Screw that noise. So we collectively decided that after much harangue back and forth, that we'll put anything in the growler. All right. You got the growlers dirty? I'm going to take away your birthday, though. <laughs> we probably won't put barrel beers in the growler. Yeah, barrel, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> barrel beers will not be. He's got to cover himself. <laughs> That's the All right. Yeah. Here, I was breaking all the growlers. Yeah. <laughs> First in line. But we'll have bottles. Yeah. That's the point of the bottles. Actually, yeah. yeah. Beer out. All right. Um, so we, you've said about maximum capacity and how many people can be here. Um, we've seen on first Friday of every month, you guys get it packed out. You have special celebrations. You do that. How many people does it take to run a wood grain? We could do it with three, but we'd be dead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we had a two is pushing it. You need one to wash glasses or we switch to plastic. Yeah. Which Thank God for plastic glasses. Yeah, <laughs> as much as we hate doing that on the busy nights like St. Patrick's Day or First Fridays, oh, you got and, we just, and, and yeah. the reality is some of these walk off. Yeah. Yeah. And that's okay. Um, but behind the bar, like today was a busy day for one person. Um, typically, we have two people behind the bar at any given time. To run wood grain as a business, the three of us work really well together. We overlap. We, we complement each other. Ryan has got the finance background. Steve's got some finance background as the brewer. I've got some brewing background, and I'm the mouth. And we all kind of overlap a little bit. <laughs> We're definitely seeing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We like that. And so we overlap really well. But we've got some fantastic employees. Uh, we have nine, nine employees. Nine going, on ten. nine going on ten employees. And the crazy thing is, all these people have full time jobs. This is not their main gig. We've got nurses and pharmacists and computer science majors. We've got people. MBAs, we have graphic designers, but all sorts of people that stand behind the bar and work for us. And without them, we couldn't do it because when you have those that caliber of people working for you, you're okay handing them the key and saying, "I got to go home." Because if they can handle a pharmacy, they can handle saving somebody's life as a nurse. Sure. I'm okay with them running my bar. Uh, we just hired a full-time tapper manager who'll be starting next week, and that'll take some more of the load off the three of us and allow Steve and I specifically to spend more time keeping up with the beer production. Yeah, sure. So we're really blessed to have really good staff. And if you want a little food, you guys have partnered up with the restaurant next door. Yeah, Pappy's has been around since February of 20, what is it, 15? Yeah. 
and they make awesome food. They do a big lunch crowd, and up until we came along, uh, they were only open for lunch and breakfast, but now they're open for supper as well. They do really good pizzas, pot roast sliders, like, what is it? Slow roasted pot roast on a pretzel bun with cheese and mayo. And you need a sap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's really good. They're not open right now. Yeah. 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 You know, the other crowd favorite at a pub is cheese balls. So we have cheese balls. All right. And those guys do really well. They bring the food over, which is just awesome. Oh, perfect. So that's nice. that's, that's easy then. It's been a great partnership, and we appreciate it. Yeah, we've got beer. They've got food. It's just a nice way to have it. And uh, Chris did this real solid when we got into the space because we applied and then through our letter of intent and stuff, and one of the first things we did was talk to Chris and say, hey, how do you feel about having a brewery as a neighbor? And apparently he went to bat for us with the landowners so we could get the space. So Chris um, was a big help for us getting opened up in this place. Very cool. Yeah, and it's such a cool location. I mean, you guys are such a part of downtown now. It's Sioux Falls is a growing place. It becomes cooler and cooler every single year to live here. And then now that we have you know a brewery like this at the heart of Sioux Falls is you know, it's it also brings like pride to people that live in Sioux Falls. You know, it's like, yeah, now we, you better check out Wood Grain because you know this is our brewery of our downtown. Sioux Falls. Stop! You're making me miss you. <laughs> 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 no, but you know it is. It really is a big part of it. And you're on the main, the main drag. Everything's down here. And when people come here, this is a part of it. So it's it's really cool that you guys have taken the extra step to like make the decor be so awesome, but in modern and in at the same time, so unmodern with how rustic it is. So, very cool, great job, guys. Thank you. Thank you. As Thank always, you. say when people see it, they said, "Is that heaven?" I said, "No, it's wood grain." <laughs> <laughs> Mike is just <laughs> slinging them. <laughs> one God, I love it, man. He was really great. Right 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 uh, <laughs> you guys have talked about some of your uh, collaborations that you've done. Is there any other breweries or local, I non-local breweries, but uh, any other local people that you work with? You said you worked with Coffee. You know, you're working next door with Pappy's for the food. We've done, first collaboration we did was with Hydra, and that was, they were still contract brewing everything at the time, and they're now making everything, or not everything, but they're starting to make beer in-house, which is good for them, it's awesome. Uh, we did a, a California Common with honey, called this, we called it Honey Common, they called it Beheaded, and we've actually had people ask for it back, it was just really nice, clean, actually a perfect summer beer that came out more in the winter, Yeah. <laughs> so maybe we'll get that figured out next time. <laughs> Uh, we did a collaboration with Gandy Dancer uh, that was based off of a gin and tonic from Parker's Bistro just down the street. Cool. So we did a what, orange peel, anise, cinnamon, and Spanish cedar. Yep. And that was called Stagger Tangent. That was actually a, a very unique beer. It wasn't for everybody, but the people that liked it just couldn't yep. get enough. And we have an upcoming collaboration with Fernson, actually, the last remaining Sioux Falls Brewery. We're going to do something. We're playing around with the beer, maybe launched at the end of October. So, and then maybe Granite City, too. Yeah, I mean, we've talked to Tom down at Zipline, but having some of the Zipline guys come up, and that's that's going to happen. It's just when is the problem. You know, yeah. Between our schedule of festivals and then the fact that they brew <coughs> all the time. Um, we're looking forward to all sorts of collaborations. We work with a lot of different people. We've got people who supply us fruit and who supply us different spices that are, that are local. Um, we've got some hop growers that bring in fresh hops, we do fresh hop firkins. And so there's, you talk about collaboration, and that's what's kind of at the heart of this scene growing. I mean, you can't make a beer scene by yourself. Right. You can't be an island in the middle. And that's what we like about what's happening in Sioux Falls, is you have Anderson Valley, and you've got Lee, and you've got um, Don of the who's helping people out, and you've got all the breweries working together, and the bars that are promoting it, and the sugars who are making sure that it's out on the shelves. Um, the reality is, without any of those moving pieces, craft beer in Sioux Falls doesn't go anywhere. Besides all the magic you make here, you also do your own root beer, and you do your own lime water, is that right? And I'm thinking there's one third one. Well, we do root beer, cream soda, lime soda water, and a honey ginger lemongrass, right. and I'm still working on perfecting my mojito soda. All right. Ooh, that's Just that room. Because I know so eventually I have to say, I stop that. to the beers, and it's nice that you guys have additional yeah. things too. So. Well, we have quite a few people who walk in and, and aren't beer drinkers. If we do carry South Dakota craft wines, that really help accentuate. We carry with the wind, straw bale, and then we just added wild prairie. Yeah, wild prairie. And then the sodas are there as well. Um, and then we have somebody come in today who kept asking for cider. Unfortunately, we can't make cider, uh, but she was looking for a gluten alternative. 
And we work really hard to keep a couple of loop reduced alternatives on tap at all times. If you look at the tap board, anything with an asterisk next to it, next to it is loop reduced. And she about lost her crap. She's like, you've got to be kidding me. I mean, I can get a flight of beer? And she ordered a flight of all our GR beers. So it's very awesome. cool. Yeah, it's really cool. Got to stay on those trends. But speaking of local, I do want to plug this real quick because our friends uh, at Union Labs are really take care of us. Barry and Wyatt, uh, Horowitz, started Union Labs several years ago just as kind of a fun side project. Wyatt's, a, I believe, is a microbiologist. But he started doing it mainly for homebrew supply. And in the last couple of years, he's really, really taken off. They supply us with some of the freshest yeast you'll ever find in the United States. They show up with these one and two and four liter jugs of the most viable yeast. You dump it in and it's fermenting like crazy. Um, and it's so cool to be able to say that we were using local hops, that we're working using with local honey, and that we're using local yeast, and all these things that are coming from around the 605 area, like we talked about. Yep. It's really an awesome opportunity to, to show people what South Dakota can do from beer to beer from beginning to end. Gnarly stuff, man. So cool. Well, I have no more one-liners, if that's what you're saying. <laughs> I, mean, I thought I was queuing you up for a good one. He's, got, yeah. through all, he's got through all his uh, material for the yeah, day. I was told no yeast jokes. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. All right. all right, guys. But, hey, thank you so much for giving us the full tour, the full interview. This is awesome. I hope everybody comes down to Wood Grain when you're in the 605, when you're in Sioux Falls. You stop at Rainbow Comics, then the second stop is Wood Grain Brewery. I mean, come on, people. Why are you watching the show? You drink beer and you read comics. That's what you do. Okay, but thank you guys so much for tuning in once again. We'll always be down here. Check, you know, obviously, America is like uh, in love with this place. If he wasn't already married, he would have gotten married here. So, um, <laughs> I hope. You guys have a good time. Thanks again for coming in. And uh, you know what John says. Keep it comics for sure, man. <laughs> Boom.